You know, when I did this video a couple weeks ago showing, uh, trying to recover some data off this and whatever, and I mentioned this was my brother-in-law's computer and then I said sister at one point. So many of you guys were confused for multiple reasons. One, I kept, I said brother and then I said sister and I said brother, let's be clear. This is my brother-in-law's computer. My sister was the one talking to me about it. So now that that's clarified, there were a couple of things that I heard quite often in that video and that's one, Jay, why didn't you replace the hard drive with an SSD? I mean, you got plenty of them. Well, my mindset has always been, you know, it's, it's just, just an internet browsing machine. It doesn't play games or anything. So why do we need an SSD? And then I got to thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, it probably needs an SSD because it's a pretty quick and easy way to upgrade a computer, especially one that's as old as this from 2010, I think it was, 11. Whatever, it's old. It's very, very old. Or 2009, it doesn't matter, it's old. The other thing was, Jay, why didn't you clean it? That thing is filthy. Well, fine. I'm doing this because I want to, not because you guys told me to. Do you want to be cooler? Do you want to be more desirable? Well, you're in luck because right now you can own your very own Jay's Two Cent swag and immediately be the cool kid on the block. Max out your sex appeal by following the link down below. Now, admittedly, this is not really new content. In fact, I have a video that's quite old that is the quickest and easiest way to upgrade your computer or at least make it feel faster. But the hardware I used at that time wasn't really all that old. It just was newer hardware kind of being bottlenecked by slow IO of the drive. So this is a pretty good test here where we can see how things like Windows 10 on hardware that is well before Windows 10 released, this was Windows 7 when it came out, and it's a Pentium dual core without hyper-threading. And we're gonna kind of do a comparison here. This has a fresh Windows install with the fresh hard drive, the fresh, it's super fresh. It's a fresh hard drive that I installed in this. And then we're gonna take um, an SSD. In fact, I've, I've been trying to think about like what I wanna use for that and, um, oh well. Wow. I even had that. We, uh, there we go. So we're gonna put in here a Samsung Evo 850 SSD, and we're gonna compare what load times and stuff are like. So we're gonna, we're gonna show you how even on old hardware, by simply updating the drive can make it feel new, fast, and exciting. Kind of like a new relationship. Except it's not gonna wear out after a week. And for all you salty folks out there, this is the novelty uh, Threadripper CPU, it doesn't actually work. All right, we need to do a boot test here. And this is a pretty standard install. There's no programs on this yet. In fact, this is latest Windows 10, 1803, uh, creator's update, unfortunately, with all the updates, and it has no bloatware on it whatsoever. So we need to do a boot test to compare how much we have actually improved. There's definitely gonna be a jump cut on this because I'm not gonna make you guys sit here and watch for five minutes while this boots. So here we go, are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. All right, so it was one minute and 30 seconds when I stopped the timer. That's actually not terrible. I expected worse, uh, considering it's just a dual core and stuff. But to be fair, the icons hadn't finished loading on the bottom. It's probably more like a minute 40. Uh, but yeah, so in terms of just response time, so here's Microsoft Edge, something no one should ever use. But I've already clicked it. You see how long it's taking for it to pop up? White window. Still thinking. Oh, we're getting some activity there. Let's just say right now it's a long time. All right, so what about the Microsoft Store? Another thing no one should ever go to, but it's there. It's kind of hard to tell what... Now, now here's the thing about slow I.O. in a hard drive like this. A lot of times people will confuse this sluggishness. Oh, Roblox comes up immediately. That's funny. People will kind of confuse the sluggishness sluggishness, I think that's a word, the sluggishness of a computer and just assume automatically I need more RAM, I need more CPU, my hardware is old. And that's not always the case. The CPU is waiting for information to be sent to it, right? If it's calling for information and then the hard drive's, oh yeah, let me get that for you. And it's like, mm -hmm, where did I put that? Where did I put that file? Ah, there it is. We haven't used that file in a while. There you go. And then it hands it over to the memory and then the memory gives it to the CPU. Well, 
that you could perceive the slowness as being memory and CPU when actually they're waiting, even on an old piece of hardware like this is waiting on the platter to spin and the needle to, ser to, to seek and to find where that block of data is. Now this is a 7200 RPM drive that I installed where they initially had a 5400 RPM. And the RPM at which the splatter is, the splatter, I'll we'll just call it the splatter. <laughs> the RPM at which the platter is spinning, the faster it's spinning, the faster it can actually find that data. And so the slower RPM with a lesser cache and less of your more recent files or cache that are being stored to be called up and accessed faster, it's just, terrible versus an SSD, whereas an SSD is solid state. The information is always there, ready to be accessed. And so it's not having to seek and look for that with a piece of spinning hardware. So that's why SSDs are something I always recommend even in my budget builds. So now what happens when you take an old piece of machinery like this and you throw in a nice new, what, what, what body organ do you think this would be, Phil? Your heart, no, your brain's a CPU. Okay, your brain is also the memory too, but different parts of your brain, right? Okay, everything's the brain. Fine, we'll go with that, everything's the brain. One last thing worth considering though when it comes to installing an SSD on a mobile piece of hardware like this is this drive could have failed because it could have gotten shocked. It could have gotten dropped. They might have been a little rough on it. Obviously the chassis is cracked. We showed you that in the last video. And if you've got a piece of delicate machinery spinning around and although it does have shock absorption built into it, it can only handle so much, that drive could have failed because of accidental damage due to physical abuse. The solid state drives are much, much less susceptible to that. Of course, they are not impervious to shock abuse, but they are much, much more resilient. All right, let's go ahead and swap out the drive and compare. Now, unlike my last video, I actually remember how to take this one apart. There's, you know, back, back in the day, Dell thought about this and easy accessibility for hard drive access. You know, they actually take the whole thing apart. A lot of you guys commented on how dumb I was when I took that apart. Yeah, I know. I know. So you simply slide out the tray. You undo the screws that are holding it down right here on the side. Slide this off. Orient this in the same direction. Put the two screws back in, slide back into your computer, put the screw in it. Well, there's normally there's two screws, but I lost one. In the computer as well as my brain. That's okay. So we're gonna have to reinstall Windows on this because what I could have done is simply cloned the drive, but I didn't want to do that because we also took this opportunity, or at least Phil took the opportunity under my delegation. So really my, I did the work. Um, we decided to go ahead and upgrade, upgrade our install media. So now we can actually install Windows and go straight to 1803 with minor updates needed after that. Because, you know, we might have to be testing some hardware here in the very near future <clears throat> that uh, is gonna require us to wanna have test benches good to go. And so we, we're gonna save a lot of time doing that. So what we're gonna do now is we actually need to test, where's my phone? We need to test the new boot time on this, which uh, obviously is going to be significantly faster. So uh, one minute and 30 seconds is where we stopped the counter before. I stopped it a little prematurely. It was probably more like 140 once all the icons had loaded. So three, two, one, go. It's funny too, we've actually noticed the BIOS even loads faster, I guess because of how quick the, the device communicates with it now. But this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the, uh, it's trying to boot off of the LAN and obviously there's nothing there. So it's just sitting there pinging the network that's not even existing. And now it sees that there is no media test or media failure. It's a media failure, test media failure. Yeah, that, and now we're into Windows. So here we are now at 29 seconds, 30. And everything's up. So I think I stopped it about a second late. Phil can actually put the correct time on there, but it's gonna be about 38 seconds, 39 seconds. So approximately a minute time reduction on just the boot. Now what about things like when we would pop up over here, Edge? Remember how Edge took a second to do anything? Well, I guess you have to double click it, don't you, Jay? Look how much faster that is already. Significantly faster. There's the App Store. Obviously, much, much faster. So what can you take away from this video? Well, you know what? Oftentimes people think, like I've said, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is an important message here brought to you by PBS. The storage device is what was holding up the rest of the hardware. So had you gone out and bought, let's say this was a desktop, had you gone out and bought a new processor and a new motherboard and new memory and had the same hard drive, 
you would have a very similar experience to what you had before. And at the end of the day, you're left going, why is my computer so slow? And people often forget that the speed of your hard drive is kind of the first line of defense in terms of speed of your computer, load times on games, obviously your OS load time. So if your system is having to wait for your hard drive to be available for the rest of the tasks that your OS is asking of it, well, obviously you can see how a simple install of an SSD for as low as, below $100. You could buy a 250 gig SSD for under $100, like around 65, 70 bucks now. And you can actually take a nine year old piece of hardware like this and speed it up to where we basically feel like we're on a modern piece of equipment that is just like a budget-based PC. All right, guys, we're gonna go. If you've got any suggestions on topics that you think we should do, make sure you let us know either in the comments below or over on Twitter. If you guys see a suggestion that you like, make sure you thumb up it so it goes up towards the top of the comments and we can actually see it. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. I gotta get back. I still have it. Why are you following me? No one might. No, ma'am, 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 ma'am. So when I was doing this video, I had this idea.